Welcome to EnergyModels.com. In this introduction to eQuest, we're going to discuss the basics of the program and its operation. Let's start by opening eQuest. It opens just like any normal program, and if you note, we're using eQuest 3-6.3. The current version is 3-6.4, but they're basically identical for practical purposes. So, when we have eQuest open, we're going to be prompted if we want to open a recent project, select an existing project, or in this case, we're going to create a new project via the wizard. Here's where things get confusing for most new users. If we click OK, suddenly we already have two choices. We have the schematic design or SD wizard and the design development wizard. The pictures here sort of note the differences. One thing we can point out is you can start out with the SD wizard. You could always move to the DD wizard later. You can't go backwards. We'll cover that later. So for now, we're going to click the SD wizard. And right away, this pops up a new window. And this is the only window that we're actually going to be in. We'll just proceed through this by going through these screens, which we can do by clicking the next screen button. Notice it says there's 41 screens, but if we look, there's much less than that here. And certain screens will be enabled simply based on the choices that you make. So eQuest is smart enough to keep things as simple as possible. So let's run through a very quick demo here. Let's say we're going to make an example office building. We already have the building type selected to the office building and we can set the location. We'll just leave the defaults, fills in the utilities. And so we already have default utility rates. Let's just say we're going to change the area to 50,000 square feet and we're going to leave it at two floors. The next screen, we set up the basic layout of the building and there are several shapes to choose from. Please note, you can even draw the shape, though that's getting way more advanced than we need for now. So let's just say that we have a U-shaped building. eQuest is smart enough to lay out the building approximately based on your dimensions. Of course, the dimensions of the U could change and you would have to edit this here by translating the values from the diagram to the values here. However, let's assume that this is okay for now. So now we have a 50,000 square foot U-shaped building. If we wanted to continue, we could go to the next screen and notice that eQuest already has default values for roofs, walls, instruction types, and so on. So if we just click finish, it's going to create our building and take us to a 2D view of that building. There's also a 3D view of the building. So here we can look at the building and see actually what we created. If we want to rotate or move the building, we can hold the control key and left click and then move the mouse and we can move the building around. If we want to zoom in on something, we can hit the control key, right click and move the mouse. Please note that this screen is actually interactive in that we can click on a surface and select the surface that we clicked on. Let's go back to 2D geometry, which works the same way. We can click on something and we can select the space that we clicked on. Okay, so let's just familiarize ourselves with the layout here. There are six icons at the top of eQuest. These are known as modules, and by selecting the appropriate module, we can edit the corresponding item. So, for instance, the airside HVAC, we can edit airside items. It should be noted that on the left side of the screen, there's additional buttons, and there's what's called a component tree. If we click that, we can see all of the components that we have modeled. And this corresponds to the module that we're in. So here we have the air side and we have all of the systems. If we click the building shell, we can view all of our spaces. If we go back to the actions tab, we can see that we have several options to choose from. One of these options is probably the most important thing to know for the general eQuest user. It's the energy efficiency measure wizard. 
let's say we've modeled this building and we want to compare it to something else, which is probably one of the best uses for eQuest. So if we want to compare something in the building, we click the energy efficiency measure wizard and we simply select what we want to compare. And is it in the building envelope? Is it in the system? And let's say it's in the system. Maybe we're putting in a different efficiency unit. So we select OK and it will take us to the EEM wizard and we can click the EEM run details to edit the efficiency in an additional run. So for instance if we had a regular efficiency option and a high efficiency option we could make that comparison this quickly. Okay so we're not going to do that in this lesson as we cover that in later lessons but it's important to know. So finally if we want to make things a little bit more complicated, we can go back and edit something. And we can switch to the design development wizard, which we can open here. It's important to note that once we access the design development wizard and take this file into it, there's no going back. We'll explain that here. A common stopping point for new users of eQuest happens early on when they wonder which wizard do I use? There's two wizards, the schematic design and the design development wizard. You can't really go wrong with either one. Now keep in mind, if you want a simple evaluation, you should always start with the SD wizard. The main difference is that the SD wizard will only model a single shell illustrated by this picture. A single shell is where each floor has the exact same shape. In the design development wizard, you can model multiple shells. You can also model single shells if you wanted. But these advanced inputs mean that it's more complicated. However, it's still pretty simple. Remember, it's a one-way street too. You can start in the SD wizard and always move into the DD wizard, but you can't start in the DD wizard and move back to the SD wizard because the DD wizard has more inputs and these inputs would have no place to go in the SD wizard. Okay, while the wizards are very good and basically if you start a file and you don't use the wizards, you're very foolish or you're probably very smart and I doubt you would have made it this far into the introduction. So, anyway, eventually, if you're going to make complex models or evaluate anything advanced, you're going to go up to the mode and need to switch to the detailed data edit. Once we switch to the detailed data edit, we can now edit any parameter within the component tree. Before switching to detailed edit mode, we could look at them but not edit them. One thing we want to make clear, if you edit anything here, you can no longer keep those changes if you go back into the wizard. So we could go back into the wizard here, but the changes that we made in detailed mode would be lost. Okay, so that covers a basic layout of eQuest. There's many ways to access different things. For instance, there's the buttons up top. If we want to simulate, there's the calculator button, but we could also go to the tools menu and click perform simulation. We can access the wizards through the tools menu as well, as well as through the buttons. The last thing we need to discuss are the file types in eQuest. There's many different file types and to access our files, we simply need to navigate to the eQuest projects directory and here we can see all of the file types. We should note that we can actually edit all of these in a notepad application. Thus, basic computer skills go a long way when using eQuest. Before we can think about editing these files, we need to know what each file does. There are many different file types in eQuest. We're going to cover the files that you might need to share with someone else. The first file is the PD2 file. This is simply the inputs that were entered in the wizards. The next file type is a PRD file and this file is the parametric run definitions. This isn't as common to edit but it's something that you need to share if say you're sending your file to someone else.
Next is the .sim file. This is a large file. It's a text file that you get when you calculate an eQuest. There are some interesting tools on energymodels.com where you can quickly get most of the important information from the .sim file and save yourself basically hours of time of paging through what could be a thousand page file. Finally, there's the .imp file. This is the main file. It's created by the wizards based on the PD2 file. And when you're in detailed mode, this is what advanced users edit with a text editor to edit things more quickly. Finally, you might notice that text color seems to change as you edit things, and sometimes there's an unexplained color that you find in eQuest. Well, there's color-coded text. Right now, all we should really be concerned with are the red and green values. Most values in eQuest start out as green, which are the default values. When you change a value, you'll notice that it turns red, meaning that it was a user edited value. The rest of the colors will be explained later when we do things like set library values, set user defined defaults, and set up linked values. Okay, so now it's time to start our lessons. Remember, you can navigate through the lessons by using the group tree at the right hand corner of the screen. All videos have free previews, but if you want to see the whole video, or go full screen in all videos, please sign up for the course at energymodels.com. When you sign up for the course, you'll also be able to take exercises that are automatically graded and you can learn more based on your feedback. You'll also be eligible for 10 GVCI credits as well as professional development hours after you pass your final exam, which you can take an unlimited number of times. Once you pass your final exam, you'll automatically be able to download a certificate to verify your completion of the course and get your GBCI hours. Don't forget to fill out your profile so that the certificate gets your name correct. And you can participate with other energy modelers in the community using our social network capabilities as well as our user forum. Thank you for watching this introduction and good luck with the rest of the course.